Hi, welcome here from Vienna for Baxa Rubiana. I was just at the Austrian Albanian General Assembly. I'm very motivated for making a clear statement here for Albania to join the European Union. Because that should be the real task of Austria to support Albania 100%. Yeah? It's not about religion. Some of the conservative side, they are a little bit wary of uh, Albania, a lot of Muslims. Yeah? And so this is a total BS argument. <laughs> I want to make the case, it's a European nation. Austria has supported Albania since 1912. Actually, since uh, the moment we stopped to pay uh, money to the Sultan for not attacking us. That was about uh, 1607, I think. Yeah? We have then demanded, as Austria and Hungarian Empire, that um, the Habsburg, basically, that we get rights to protect the Catholics in uh, the Ottoman Empire, like the, uh, it was called the uh, Cultural Protectorate. Yeah? That means what the Russians ask for the Christians of Orthodox belief, the Austrians got for the Catholics um, and Christians. And uh, that was um, now 350 years of support for the Catholics of Albania. And I think we should honor that. Yeah? The people, especially in the north of Albania, have to serve the EU membership. Now many have left anyhow already to Austria. And uh, that's not the whole idea of Europe, that everybody comes uh, to Central Europe because we somehow leave uh, the Eastern European countries alone and we reject integration. And that's a major strategic mistake if we continue this. And I would like to make it very clear that the Austrian historic political strategic priority must be that all the countries from Ukraine to Albania, from Albania, uh, from Montenegro to Georgia are members of the European Union. And by the way, of NATO and of course Austria joined NATO. That's no doubt, I think you were very clear on that one. But coming back to Albania, this is a wonderful, amazing country. Many of you have seen a lot on my podcast already. And I want to reiterate how beautiful it is, how amazing it is and how European it is and how important it is that it is fully part of the European Union. It's a NATO ally since 2009. It unfortunately doesn't have the euro. That is a big problem. I have made the case point. I think a lot of time already and it's a country full of diversity, beautifulness and of course natural landscape and uh, which is really astonishing. It's a touristic magnet with this historic uh, significant uh, uh, harbors from Flora to Durres. And by the way, I think we can sum it up and say that the reason why the First World War broke out is because Austria didn't want to give the strategic harbor of Turis to Serbia. And the Serbian extremists, uh, together with the Russian extremists, have decided to kill Franz Ferdinand in order to blow up the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. <laughs> and that's, I think, a very accurate <laughs> description of the historic reality. And we have done what we could in the years before in the First World War to support Albanian independence and the Serbs have uh, taken that, not all of them, but these extremist groups which were in alliance with the Russian uh, Secret Service. And uh, to some extent <laughs> it seems to me that today still the situation is not completely unsimilar to that. So we have seen now this uh, visit of Chancellor Scholz, he didn't went to Albania but he went uh, to um, Kosovo, first time directly to Kosovo. That was much better if you contrast it as well with the Austrian Chancellor who went first, it was recently I think in November, he went first uh, to, um, to uh, Serbia, then he went uh, to uh, Kosovo and then to Bosnia. So the German Chancellor went first uh, to um, Kosovo, then uh, to Thessaloniki I think and then to Bulgaria or it was otherwise around and then the last leg the last visit was in Serbia and he was making it very, very abundantly clear that um, Serbia should recognize Kosovo before they will join. Even when Mr. Vucic really didn't like it and he created his own networks and open Balkans and uh, has all his other strategies to exclude Kosovo and he recognized it, but he will not succeed. And uh, the Germans were abundantly clear. The Austrians, unfortunately, under this confused and inexperienced uh, and uh, unfortunately under the tutelage of uh, Schüssel being very dominant here pro-Russian Chancellor has made again uh, uh, different and confused policy noises. Now the Austrian Foreign Minister was again with the Minister of Foreign Affairs from Serbia and that was again such a kind of cozy uh, welcoming and uh, uh, nice uh, Serbia. Uh, what is this all about? It's for me a mystery and it's also not a uh, good strategy. 
we should be much uh, stricter with uh, Serbia because uh, they are really um, not uh, playing ball with us in many respects. And when then the moment was coming, they were again like uh, really problematic in many aspects. Yeah? yeah, it's very beautiful here and I like it very much. Uh, it's the Vienna First District and I call for Albania to join the European Union. There's a lot of interesting uh, links with Albania, not only the Skanderbeer, uh, Skanderbeer helmet which we have here today and still and actually we should return it. I made the case a lot of times already. It's here well guarded, yes, but it's not honored. And why should we have that one? It would be much better to return it, to make a big tour, to give it uh, first the three months to Macedonia in Jair and then uh, to Kosovo and then to Montenegro and then to Albania and then keep it in Albania in a museum. Best would be, I made the point already, in the museum of the King Sogo in Torres. That is the optimal location long term for Austrian Albanian Friendship Museum and that would be in Torres obviously the place where we were great. Creating is too much uh, where we were, where the first Albanian Republic uh, Kingdom, the first Albanian state was actually planned to be in Torres, but it was just too insecure for, um, for, uh, for the founder of Albania, Cemel. Is, um, uh, I forgot now the name, I'm really a bit confused, I'm getting tired here. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, Mustafa Cemal, no, that was the other guy. <laughs> okay, before I lose my thread here in my spontaneous video, and <clears throat> you will accuse me of uh, being <laughs> incompetent, I will just uh, not say the name. But uh, the founder of uh, Albania, he came from Austria with a ship in Duris. It was too dangerous because the Serbs were already there. And then he went on to Flora. That's why Flora was the place of the independence of uh, Albania in 1912 and otherwise it would have been tourists. So the logical place yeah, for um, uh, the tourists, um, uh, for the museum where the Skander Bay helmet would be, would be in, um, in Torres. I think so, in the King Sogo Museum. If anybody disagrees, <laughs> let me know. Yes, and now the EU candidate status should be coming, um, also the start of the negotiations, because for, um, since 2014, when they got it already, because Rama intervened heavily against the truck uh, village in the south, and then um, basically we are now six, eight years later and they didn't get the status. So I wonder exactly what, uh, what we're waiting for. <laughs> so it's quite interesting actually, yeah. Yes. So that would be necessary to happen and then to fast track the membership of Albania as a NATO member into the uh, EU. I think personally, as I made very clearly, within three years that can be done, two years actually, that's easy because uh, the preparation process is completed. So ultimately, when the Albanians adopt the Euro and uh, we put them into Euro the European Parliament, it's done. It's a done deal. It's not so problematic. Yes. That would be, I think, the much better and logical way to have the three NATO allies into the EU, Montenegro, Macedonia and, North, uh, and Albania. And then uh, we have clarity and then also the Serbs understand that we treat our friends good and our enemies and opponents and the ones who are with Putin mentally, we don't treat so good. So that would be very logical. It's a beautiful evening here, nice atmosphere. The meeting was over a bit earlier. And so I have time to make a statement here about Albania in the EU and obviously that would be good. Yeah, there's also a lot of interesting projects. Um, I mentioned many of them, the Alba Austrian school in Škodra, very good. There's a voluntary fire service which is done from Austria in Albania, very good. There's also a lot of investments in Albania. So Albania is really um, a very good friend of Austria and our friendship should be deepening and intensifying in economic, political, social and European politics terms and that would be of course excellent. So I call for that and it's a very logical uh, thing and then when Albania, Montenegro and Macedonia in, in the EU then we can uh, uh, tackle the issue of uh, Serbia, Kosovo and Bosnia by basically getting Kosovo and Bosnia very fast in the EU and NATO and then uh, Serbia will be isolated and they will get the message I think only in that moment. They can then uh, join Russia or join the European Union 
but I think their choice will be clear and Vucic will be booted out by his own people in a new revolution, which I hope the new 5th of October 2000 to come to send him uh, out and to send him hopefully towards Russia because as he sees he is exactly like that. So there is a lot of tourism here. You see the season has really started. You can see so many people out there and it's really uh, tourism is a major magnet of economic development after Corona. This is really very important and it will be again a powerful economic tra transformator. All those who somehow talk about over tourism, that's completely wrong. I never understood this uh, philosophy of anti-tourism, uh, over tourism. That's all absolutely nonsensical. We should have more tourism. We need more tourism. We need more economic development. And definitely we need more growth and we need more unity in the European Union. All these degrowth people and all these uh, anti Xeno, also these xenophobes and protectionists, it's a complete disaster. So, for the for Albania, I think I made it very clear today on this wonderful 13th of June, I call for a fast track EU enlargement and for openness and for inclusiveness of Albania, of uh, North Macedonia in, in the European Union. And I hope that there will be wisdom. You see, very nicely, by the way. I think you can see it. Stop the war. <laughs> Stop the war and support Ukraine. Albania is 100% um, uh, uh, loyal to Ukraine. And I think that also when now Triton Abasovic, the new Albanian ethnicity prime minister of Montenegro, goes uh, to Ukraine, I hope he will invite him for the Regional Cooperation Council and for SEFTA, something the EPP parties have rejected all the time. And I am fighting five years for that and I hope that there will be now some clarity from the Greens at least uh, to support uh, the integration of Ukraine in the Regional Cooperation Council and SEFTA. Yes, that's my hope. And the other Prime Ministers didn't go together, so Montenegro is the only one going. It is a bit of a pity, I don't know why Macedonia, Albania, they would be very logical, Bosnia and of course Serbia, they probably visit Moscow, that's of course very sad. but. That's the reality of their choices politically. Yes, tomorrow I will be in Linz and now the rain is starting. So I will keep you posted on that one. Maybe just uh, to add on, I insist and I reiterate that uh, what I always do in these videos, that we should sink every ship of the Russians in the Black Sea and until they leave uh, Kherson and Zaporizhia, uh, that unfortunately we cannot realistically defend Lugansk and Donetsk. It will be uh, impossible, but uh, that uh, there will be a new GDR, de facto partition. And by the way, some attack me on Twitter for me advocating that way, but I insist it's the best way. Uh, I said it in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and now we have this war. The partition is de facto a reality since 2015 Minsk. Not to accept it and not to, to work with it is a big mistake by the European and the Western authorities because partition obviously requires NATO and EU integration and uh, the euro uh, for the free Ukraine. And now, there will, now we have the war and the trillion costs and all this disaster and uh, we have no other outcome anyhow. And the only logical outcome is exactly this. So stop the war is one message. But stop the war and integrate Ukraine into NATO, EU and the Euro is the other logical message. And the logical message is as well the division of Ukraine. And um, that's not something taken lightly, but it's the only way to stop that war. And it's the way I propose since 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. And we could have saved uh, ten thousands of people and trillions of costs if we listened to my <laughs> podcast. And the ultimate way forward is exactly the same. Good. Thanks a lot uh, for uh, listening to my podcast. Uh, Stop the war is very good. I will make another photo. Now I will go home and integrate Albania in the European Union. And uh, first NATO, first the Euro, and then the EU. That's the logic. So the countries like Montenegro, which are perfect, uh, they should be very fast into the European Union. But we should also include Albania and North Macedonia. 
Thanks a lot for that. More to come. Stop the war and integrate everybody in NATO and the EU and the Europe. Thanks a lot. Bye.